Howdy! Natalie coming to live. Spirit of coffee. Got my coffee here. Yum, yum, yum. Mm. So yummo. Um, so on the coffee front, I have found the most magnificent, amazing tool that let's just say besides my air fryer, this tool is <laughs> my most favorite thing ever in the world. Um, and it is a little frother and I got it at Target and literally all you do is just turn the button and it goes, zzz. that's how I call it the zzz. good morning. Whoever's on here on Facebook, say good morning. I didn't see who it was. Um, and you go, zzz, and it literally froths your, your, your milk or your, whatever you're putting in it. If it's almond milk, I use almond milk, but if you put, you know, cream or whatever and you did it, you'll get like this nice froth. So anyway. That's up with the coffee. Um, absolutely love it. It's my favorite thing to do in the morning is <laughs> to make my creamy, frothy um, creamer to go on my coffee. So there you go. If you want to change your like mind blowing and you want to change your whole ritual with coffee, I highly recommend it. So go out and get one. I think it was like 15 bucks, something like that. Pretty cheap. Anyway. And I can't even remember what I paid for it, to be honest with you. I bought two of them. So there you go. All right. So uh, let's get started. Uh, and it's been a while since I've been on here. Um, and it's because I've been focusing a lot on really what is it going to take to maybe evolve um, Spirit and Coffee into the next phase, which it's ready for. It's ready to expand. It's ready to reach um you know, different individuals and to start to partner and collaborate and connect with other people. Good morning, Melinda. So um, I've taken a little break um, and what I've been doing and I'm excited about is developing a retreat uh, for one. And so the retreat would be a series of individuals besides myself <laughs> um, that, good morning, Andrew, that would actually, you can, um, um, join the retreat because it's going to be a hybrid both online and in person and going to have a series of different topics right um, you could call it professional development but literally it's going to be spiritual alchemy but we're just going to say professional development because the world um, especially the professional world's not I don't think ready for that particular you know spiritual alchemy they'd be like what do you mean um and so companies i'm sure are not like hey you guys we're gonna go to a spiritual alchemy retreat um and you're gonna learn you know professional development they'd be like what are you talking about but it is under the umbrella of spiritual alchemy because everything is at the end of the day when you start to talk about it and you start to dissect and pick apart spiritual alchemy itself is just an umbrella term that umbrella term can be um you can talk about nearly any subject under that umbrella term it is the law of nature it's natural law and so you can't be outside natural law because that's the law of, of god right god's natural law he you, you can't be outside the confines of that so really excited um so retreat coming up and then working on my courses that i'm putting online now the courses that are online um good morning i don't know who that was is that ignacio i think it might be i just see the faces but i'm like i don't know who they are so say good morning if you're on here please um at least we could say cheers to you salud mm. and then take a lovely drink of that coffee which is phenomenal um but um so the the courses that are coming out now the course that's going to be coming out um i'm finishing it up is setting goals and achieving them um which is really cool because typically we set out goals right we start to take to say well here's the goals that i want to you know accomplish and typically what happens when we do that is we sort of come into these walls and we don't know how to get over the walls, right? Or go over or go through or however we're gonna do it. And sometimes we just stop. And we maybe have a goal that we've been talking about our whole life that we've never accomplished. And we keep saying we're gonna do it, but it never happens, right? Um, well, there's a lot of goals that I've said that still haven't happened. However, there are a lot of goals that I've created that I've already done. And typically, even though it may take me time, I complete those goals. 
and people have told me from my past, it's funny because I had a friend who was like, wow, you've done everything you said you were going to do. And I said, yes, it may not have happened overnight. And, and I think individuals were sort of, when you start to speak about into existence, what you want to create, people are expecting that it's supposed to happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. Some things might, but mostly they don't, they take time. Sometimes you run into things, sometimes you have to change, and sometimes the entire project changes and morphs into something different, and that's okay. At the end of the day, it's what's the intention. So, um, good morning, John Cat. So, basically, the course that will be coming out, Setting Goals and Achieving Them, is something a little bit different. <laughs> Meow. Good morning, Chris. Something a little bit different, and the difference being that it talks about, first of all, how to utilize time, because time is such a critical thing. Hey, Suzanne, time, literally, when you learn how to reconstruct your time and gain back your time, you can start to then develop and create what it is you want and start to achieve the goals that you want. Time is a tricky thing, and I've talked about time quite a bit, and in fact, you can talk about time for the rest of your life and still not understand it, right? That, I mean, it's the, the conversation still going on about time in physics, right? Classical, quantum, all of these different sectors. Well, what about time? Time itself is just what we observe, right? In the three-dimensional time space. In this particular world, we're viewing time, okay? Does it mean that it's real? No. It just means that that's how we experience life is through time. Okay, so how do we how do we reconstruct that? How do we change it so that we can then start to create and develop the goals that we want to achieve? So the course goes into a bit of that, right? It goes into a bit of how do we use our time? How do we reconstruct it? How is it that the uh, Buddhist monks, right, or how is it that these individuals who have created an empire have done it? Well, people would say, well, they have the resources. Yeah, sure, they have resources, but there are some people who come from ground zero and rise. How do they rise? Well, they're successful, they're determined, that's one thing, but that's not all of it. They still have the 24 hours in a day that we do. How they utilize their 24 hours, which is still a construct of time, right? We don't have to use 24 hours, but we do. So we're going to talk in a 24-hour period because that's what we use right now. That's the system we use. If you're using a different system, awesome. Okay. But for the masses, we use a 24-hour time period. And in that 24 hours, we certain people get certain things done and other people don't. And really what ends up happening is we end up in a time loop. And then time is being taken away from us, right? Because we put ourselves in this time loop. It's kind of crazy where you'll start to notice the patterns repeat themselves. And I can give you a story. Okay. So um, my sister was really not feeling well at one point. And so I went over there, right, to do some, some healing, some spiritual healing work with her. Okay. So, um, so basically what happened is she was sick and I was trying to help her. My mom was there and it was like I was stuck in a time loop. It was the most crazy experience I've ever had because the pattern kept repeating itself. My mom would come downstairs. She'd go to get ice. The ice would fall on the floor. She'd throw it in the sink. She'd go back up. She'd come back down. She'd get the ice. The ice would fall on the floor. She'd throw it in the sink. She'd go back up. And I'm like, what kind of time warp loop am I in right here? It just kept repeating itself and nothing was changing. And I was like, whoa, this is weird. I was experiencing the programming of time. Okay. Because time is a program it's a construct program right and so Troncat, as you're saying time is eternal yes i would say but it's not time that's eternal right it's the eternal that's eternal time is a construct of the internal so we would see it as a program of the eternal and that time program sometimes gets us stuck in a loop okay it, and it, it perpetuates the same loop over and over and over and over again where we're sort of hitting our head on the table. We're just kind of doing the same shit over and over, right? Um, if you don't have any time management, don't worry, there's plenty left. 
Um, so we would say the soul's eternal, perhaps, right? And that the soul goes on forever. And that's a belief system. If you have faith and you want to believe that, right? Um, it's, it's totally up to you, right? What your faith is, what you believe in and that. But they will say that the soul's eternal, okay? And that we live forever. And that that foreverness is not bound by the constructs of time. So time is really just a program of experience. We are experiencing the program and we get up and we see the sun comes up, the sun goes down, the sun comes up. And it's kind of cool if you've ever watched those videos where you see like how a plant is born and, and it goes through time and you see it sort of evolving into something. You're like, whoa, that's really cool. But it's really just us observing the unfolding, right, of, of the miracle. It's really the unfolding of the miracle that we're experiencing and we're calling it time. But without that, right, if there's an eternal, then there's no really, is there unfolding? Well, there might be, but the observation of it might be different, right? But we're seeing it unfold. It's like a fractal. We experience a fractal pattern and we observe it. And it's this pattern that repeats itself, but we're observing it, right? So the observation, the mere observation of it is what it is. And for us to be able to observe. Now, I'm not just talking about observing through the eyes. We have the senses as well. The hands, you know, the taste, the tongue, you know, we walk through life. So someone who is blind perhaps experiences time differently. Their connection to time is different. So um, looking at it. And so I'm really excited. Um, the course is, again, setting goals and achieving them. But it goes into the time and understanding how to gain more time back right? Which is pretty cool. So we would do that. And then also it's really putting together a construct of almost like a vision statement, but not a vision statement in, I'm going to put a bunch of pictures on the wall and stare at them and hope that they get achieved. No, it's actually a, a model that allows us to bring our spirit into action. And it teaches us how to do that. How do we bring that eternal Right. That you were talking about, John, like what how do we bring that eternal into the construct of time and space? How do we start to develop and create what it is that's internal? And bring it out into the external world. So it's really there's action behind it as well. There's not just let's communicate about it. We also got to put some ganas, right? We've got to put some of that energy into it and move ourself forward so talking about it's not enough you, talking about it's one thing we get stuck in the dialogue a lot and that you know that's usually what ends up happening is the dialogue because we're not sure how to take it from dialogue into actionable you know items that we can actually manifest and create a true manifester knows how to put the action behind the word that's why we have verbs, right? We've broken up speech, right, to help us, move us along. We say the noun or the object, right, and then we put a verb, which is an action. We've got to be in action in order to create. That's part of the process. If you're not in action, you're not creating. Manifestation is not just sitting around and doing nothing. It's actually, there's a doing part of it in this particular time space. So we have to learn. Now the doing that we do doesn't have to be so strenuous. And that's where the magic comes in. Well, people say, well, you know, I could just manifest by merely thinking about it, but there are, there's, there's some action behind it that's happening. You're moving in a direction, you're communicating in a way, you're spelling out, right? You're typing out or spelling out what it is that you desire. And then you're actually putting some sort of energy behind it to move it forward. So excited about the course, excited about what's next, and hopefully individuals will be excited about that. <laughs> They'll be excited like I'm excited. So continuing to do um, the great work. Um, another part is, um, as I said, the retreat really looking in um, my next phase of my master's program 
taking two courses, personal identity and transpersonal psychology. Um, and really trying to figure out where I want to go in terms of um, my PhD program, right? Because there are many different branches of psychology. Now, it will be in the school of psychology, um, and it will be, you know, to help the world. <laughs> That's my mission, right, is to help individuals, help myself, help the world to open up their eyes to their truth. Okay, not my truth, their truth. Once people are grounded in understanding their truth, they're able to create what they want, right? Or they have purpose and meaning. And purpose and meaning is a huge thing um, for individuals. Purpose and meaning allows us to have something to be motivated to move toward. People could say, well, it doesn't matter. We don't need a purpose. No. Okay, then don't. But here's the deal. If you don't have purpose and you don't feel like you have purpose, it's very hard to stay motivated in life. When we have a purpose, we have an aim, we have a reason for moving forward, it becomes easier for us to want to move forward, to say, hey, I want to hit that milestone. I want to hit that mark. I want to do what I need to do to get to that place. Otherwise, we just sit out and we die, literally. So a, a quote that um, my dad used to tell me is an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And really what that means is we become our own worst enemy when we just idle and sit out and don't move forward. Our body will just decay if we just sat there and didn't do anything. There has to be some sort of this action behind it again. And perhaps we do get to a place later when we feel like we've accomplished all that we need to do where we stay still and we're like, okay, we're ready to go. There are people who do that. They're When they're ready, they're ready. And they just stop. They're exhausted. They've done it all. And they're just ready to stop. When you stop, you start decaying. It's just like stagnant water. Stagnant water, right, starts to corrode. So we don't want to corrode. We want to continue to move, right? We're, we're young. We're vibrant. We're still ready to do some. We have some missions to accomplish. Everybody here, which is no one, <laughs> which is Natalie by herself. She's on a mission. <laughs> Everybody else like, I'm done. I always laugh. People will enter and then they'll take off. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll just talk to myself. And that's fine. I'm totally fine with talking to myself. <laughs> oh, unless you're still on Facebook. Hi. I don't know if somebody's still on here. I don't know why it doesn't show me who's on here. It drives me nuts. Um, but the podcast does. Who just joined us? Um, oh, it's Lee. Hello. Got on and off. Um, so, again, the time construct, um, setting goals, achieving them, and then understanding how to utilize that for the betterment of your life and to put into action. Um, also, I think with the podcast, we'll be having guests. Um, I want to have um, maybe some of my professors come on and just talk about, you know, um, certain topics, topics of, you know, psychology and um, perhaps dreams or whatever subject they want to talk about. I know that I recently took the psychology of happiness um, and perhaps talking about how do we develop happiness not more happiness but how do we develop the strength to overcome um the unpleasant feelings and step into happiness right it's almost like we're stepping out of and into happiness um there's also consciousness right consciousness is really my jam what i love to talk about is consciousness and uh, and looking at it from the framework of how do we change these paradigms, like it's really complex because we're stepping into a new paradigm where people don't even know how to let go of the old one or at least honor that we're stepping into a new one and honor the old one, but allow ourselves to transition into a new way of viewing the world. We've got to do it. There's no other way. Why? Because the world itself is calling for us to shift and change the way we see it. If we do not 
right? We're going to continue to rape the, 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 the actual world itself, right? And, and take the resources without really having any kind of honor or love or compassion for what we're doing, because that's really what's happening. And we're just sort of all over the place, right? And so for us to really um, reconnect into the essence, right, of this beautiful world that we have. So if we can tap into that and change the paradigm into holism or to living systems or whatever new paradigm is coming, which is an all-encompassing and an all-understanding of life itself and how we are a part of this grand design and how we get to respect it and come full circle, that is the paradigm we'll shift into. And that is spirit and coffee as well. It's It evolves and it expands and it changes even the perception itself will change. But that's what should be happening. That's part of the alchemic process. That's why I'm not attached to just one thing because things shift and change. If I was attached to the same ideas when I was little, right, who knows where I'd be? <laughs> so we we get to, we get to change the way and our mindset and the way we view the world. It helps us to engage the world from a different perspective. It allows us to have respect for the miracle that we've been born into. Okay. Awesome. So I hope this helps. Um, of course, it's a short little live video. Um, and I probably won't be on for the rest of the week because I will be out of town. Um, I'm traveling. As you, my old viewers understand, I'm a traveler. Um, perhaps I'll get on um, Spirit and Coffee and just say hello while I'm traveling. <laughs> um, and I'm going to continue working on these courses so that I can bring them to you. And it's going to be an eight week course. So be on the lookout for that, which I love. And I'm excited about. Um, so there you have it. Have the most beautiful, amazing, phenomenal day ever. And I will see you guys probably on maybe Friday. Um, and then um, perhaps the next week we, I can get on. So there you go. So I love you guys. Have a fantastical day. And I will be seeing you soon. Bye-bye.